up, y'all? It's your girl, Montana. Be sure to check me out on the Black College Club, where we talk about trending topics surrounding HBCUs and the Black College experience at PWI. program when I first started and I really got to see the campus before actually having to make a decision and I really liked the campus and the administration seemed really cool so that's how I decided. So the best school you got into is one of the top 20 schools in the nation which tells me that you're shooting from the stars from the jump. Yeah. So, I, so what other schools did you look into um, in your application process? Yeah, so it was like by far the best school that I got into because I didn't apply to much schools on the same like level, I guess. But I also applied to San Jose State, Long Beach State, Spelman, Sacramento State. So you kind of spread it in terms of like locality and, and type of school because yeah. Spencer is more of a college format, whereas some of the other schools you mentioned were much larger university type. So, so yeah. Tell me about that thought process. Why why the smaller school versus some of the larger state schools as well? Yeah, so I grew up going to private schools and I really kind of appreciated the smaller class sizes because I can get distracted really, really easily. And I also like having the possibility to be close with my professors and peers. And I feel like that just doesn't happen in huge classroom settings. Like my dad also teaches at UC Berkeley and my grandma teaches at UC Berkeley. So I've seen how those Classes can be so huge and it can be so easy to not go to class or get kicked to the side or just forget something and feel like no one's looking out for you. But in small, tight knit schools, you know, you feel like someone's looking out for you. If not your teacher, then your classmates because the classes are like 30 people at most. Mm -hmm. So, so Pinsir is part of the Claremont College system, and there are a few college systems like that in, in, the, in the U.S. Yeah. Um, how would you describe? The, the college system, what it's being like being down there and, and being amongst the students that go to the different schools. Talk a little bit about that experience in the community. Yeah, so the Claremont Consortium is a really tight-knit community and you can take classes at any one of the colleges. So if you basically get into one college, you get into all of them, which is awesome. But it's really unique because each campus is completely different. Like, Pittsburgh has this, like, the specialty is environmental, like sustainability and environmental studies. And you see a lot of cactuses and, you know, that's the campus's aesthetic. And then you go over to Harvey Mudd, which really centers around, you know, computer science and math. And that's a whole different look as well. And then, you know, each campus is just so unique and has different specialties. But it's awesome that you can take classes at each one of them and kind of you can even major at another one. So I really, really appreciate that. And like I said, it's such a small school that, you know, you have support at each one of the campuses and even like the HBCUs, there's like a 5C HBCU and then HBCUs just like per school. So, or <laughs> not HBCU, but- um, The Black Student Club. Black, BSU, BSU, yeah, 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 Black Student Union. That's what I was going to do. But, yeah, I really, really appreciate the small sizes and the fact that you can take classes at each one of them and go to a talk at CGU if you want, even. How would you describe living in the community there? Uh, what is it? Is it Pomona or Montclair? What's, what's it's the, in Claremont, Claremont, yeah. Montclair. But Pomona and Montclair are like the neighboring cities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So how, how would you describe the, the town? Is it college town? Is it sleepy town? Like what's oh, it's it? definitely a college town. Like I love Claremont for the school, but there's really not that much to do outside of Claremont. Like for fun, we go to like LA, mm -hmm. you know. But there's lots of really good places to eat and really good thrift shops like the best of shops. Mm -hmm. So that's super fun. But really, I love Claremont because of the school. And you were an athlete too, right? My freshman year, yeah. So talk a little bit about that, what that experience was like. It was interesting. I played volleyball for my school my freshman year, and it was great. I, I liked the coach, and I liked my teammates a lot, great girls. Um, it was just I was already dealing with the transition from a high school to college and I was also experiencing culture shock and I missed my family so much at the same time and I was like 
really nervous about performing while in school, so it was just a lot happening at once. And I love volleyball so much, it's just I kind of realized that I'm not going to be a professional volleyball player, so is it really worth the time that I'm investing? Because, you know, it's practice every day for two hours. I had so much studying to do. So I kind of just had to, when I got to college, just prioritize my future and like what I thought I could see myself doing and so as soon as I started doing that and thinking long term I knew what I had to do in order to like focus on my academics but yeah no I, I liked playing volleyball for the time being I thought it was really good it was a really good way to get introduced to more people because I met some of my first ever college friends because I um, had to go to campus early for preseason and those are some friendships that I still have and I appreciate that and I also appreciate what I learned from just being on a team and, you know, working with others. It really has taught me a lot, but all in all, I just decided to quit because I wasn't going to be a professional volleyball player in school. It's really hard. She mentioned the culture shock. Was that more academic? Was that more student body? What, what was the biggest part of the culture shock? It was really both, I'd say, because I went from, you know, floating by in high school, getting away with, like, Finessing assignments, you know, just kind of doing not the bare minimum, but just enough to get into college. That was my focus. And when I got to campus, I realized that everyone else is just so, so focused and so driven and well accomplished. Kind of like my grandma was saying, like that. I it motivated me to like start studying more and just be on my on my school grind a little harder. But yeah, I was shocked at first because in high school I was used to like people not necessarily really caring about school or, you know, just being more interested in school being over to like start sports. Um, so I had a culture shock in the academic sense, but also in the diversity sense or the lack of diversity. I must say because I'm from Oakland, California, which is extremely diverse and I went to St. Mary's College High School in Berkeley, which was also extremely diverse. And um, I watched the first Black College episode and Montana was kind of talking about how she wasn't used to being around so many white people. And also that's not what the college said. They made it look like they had a more diversified demographic, which my school did as well. So I really wasn't prepared for that because like I said, when I chose it, I, I did the diversity program. So I was around other people of color. But when I got there and I was surrounded by so many people that didn't look like me, I immediately, like on the first day of school, I was just like, uh, maybe this isn't the right place for me. I called my mom immediately and I was just like, hey mom, there are a lot of white people here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this, but um, no, I, I was just staying focused on my academics and I made some really good friends and it got easier with time and I, I know that like Oakland is a reflection of the world so honestly I think that really prepared me for like the work that I'm going to go into. Mm -hmm. So talk about a, a little bit about your professional aspirations and how your school has or maybe may not has mm -hmm. uh, prepared you for, for what you want to do professionally. Yeah so I actually love Pitzer. I love every almost every single um, teacher that I've ever had a class with. And I think that they really do prepare you. Like they hold you to a very high standard, which is true for the work field. Like you're not gonna be able to miss assignments, you know? Um, so I think they've really prepared me. They didn't have my major though, I must say, that I wanted to, I'm, I wanna study city planning and urban studies. Um, and they didn't have that at my school, so I chose to do organizational studies and sociology. But um, one thing that my school does is really cool is you can pick, create your own major. I didn't have the energy to do that. It was just, it just seemed way too complicated. But like, it's cool to know that if you have the freedom to do that, you can. But yeah, they didn't have any urban studies like majors, but I think that studying sociology and organizational studies is really going to help me with my future because. Um, in order to in order to understand like issues of injustice or where things need to grow in organizations, you have to understand how people work and how people think and how different groups function in society. And also that business aspect was like to how organizations run. What are the things that you can do to make um, employees feel good? And those are both two um, two fields that I can bring into what I want to do, um, which is kind of like my grandma, like social justice work. <coughs> 
equity work and city planning. Mm -hmm. So you're a senior now. You I am a senior. Six months left. Mm -hmm. any, any, any regrets? Any things you wish you would oh, oh yeah. I, um, I stressed myself out so much in college. Like, and I'm still stressed. I'm stressed right now. I'm like, like being a senior and just being in school is so stressful and I think that we kind of normalize that. Like, school is just stressful. I mean, it's, it's hard for everyone. But there is this kind of unspoken pressure that I think that all students deal with of kind of not feeling like they're doing enough or, you know, everyone has experience putting a whole lot of work into an essay and getting it back and realizing it's not the grade you want. Like, it's, it's heartbreaking, you know? Um, but I, there was a point in time where I was at school um, last year and even this year online that it just like, it stopped becoming enjoyable. Like it was just extremely stressful for me. Like all I was thinking about was deadlines. I would wake up stressed. And I, I don't want to graduate top of my class. Like I'm going to try my best, but my goal is not to be better than anyone else. So I kind of had to lower my standards a little bit and kind of prioritize my own self and my self care. And I started feeling better after that because I know that no one's gonna be looking at these little itty bitty things that I'm looking at with my, within myself. And a lot of students are doing that. So I'd say my biggest regret is not just like lightening up a little more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's interesting because uh, I'm dating myself, but when, when I was in college, uh, my senior year, Facebook came out. Um, now it's every other platform has a social component. Would you say that social media has added to that pressure, to that stress? Oh, absolutely. Like I, I wholeheartedly believe that social media it ha is having extremely negative detrimental effects on children. Mm -hmm. Not only children, but like people my age. It sets like an unfair beauty standard, and also not beauty standard, but just like accomplishment standard. You know, like. No one in my family graduated college in four years except for me and you know it took my aunt like eight years, it took my dad four and a half, it took my grandma five and she slept through a lot of her classes <laughs> as we just said but um, you know like it's hard when, you, when, you, when it's graduation season and you're seeing everybody posting their grab pics you're like oh my god I'm behind you know <clears throat> it's just I think that social media just pushes people to compare themselves to, themselves to other people and that just is not healthy because we're all different and we move in different ways and we're all just so unique so comparing yourself to other people it, it's just never going to do anything good. Agreed, agreed. Any, any advice that you have for somebody, you know, rising junior, rising senior in high school, they're trying to figure out what they're going to be doing next year, next two years, going through the application process. Some people are weighing going to, um, you know, a predominantly white institution versus going to an HBCU. Mm -hmm. Being that what you've been through and also considering your, your family background, mm -hmm. uh, do you have any advice for, for a rising junior, senior that's applying to college now? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to say follow your heart and just do what you want to do because um, as you previously mentioned, uh, basically everyone else in my family went to an HBCU, so when I said that I was going to Pitzer, you know, obviously there was some pushback, you know, like, are you sure you don't want to go to Spelman? Like, are you sure you don't want to go just for a semester? Like, maybe you can transfer, like, take time off. But just do, just follow your heart and do what you want, and I'd say just don't be too hard on yourself once you get started at your college.